pure evil. That what was on display yesterday morning inside the First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs, Texas, when a gunman opened fire and killed 26 and wounded 20 during Sunday service. The victims, they ranged from 18 months old to 77 years old and included the pastor's 14-year-old daughter. The killer, 26-year-old Devin Patrick Kelly, I don't even want to use his name, began shooting with an AR-15 style rifle around 11.30 a.m., 30 minutes after the service began. Kelly then entered the sanctuary and gunned down his victims, many at point-blank range. Authorities collected hundreds of shell casings from the church and 15 empty magazines that held 30 rounds each. Joining us now to shed light on this horrific story from Sutherland Springs, Mike Jordan, whose son witnessed the attack and whose close friends with the man who confronted this killer and likely prevented more carnage. And from Houston, Texas's Attorney General, Ken Paxton. Uh, Mike, let's talk to you first. Uh, your son, who came face to face with the killer, is so distraught. I mean, he was originally scheduled to join us tonight, and right. I don't blame him one bit for being too distraught and too, frankly, just don't want to deal with us anymore. So thank you, sir, for joining us. Please tell sure. us how he is coping and what he has told you about what he came face to face with. Well, he's coping with it. it it's, it's difficult. Uh, a lot of his friends, people that he's known all of his life, you know, died in this tragedy yesterday. And we've been interviewed, you know, one interview after another, and he's just to the point after going to the vigil that was, you know, here in Sullivan Springs earlier, he's to the breaking point. Uh, I mean, he narrowly dodged three bullets that went through his house, and uh, my grandson, his son, was in the house like four feet away from one of the bullets that came through their wall, you know, so he's, he's out of it. You know, he's coping with it, but you know, he'll be okay, but it's going to take some time. Did he go into the church at all himself? Uh, he did after, after the shooter had been, uh, after the shooter actually was uh, engaged by another uh, person and left the scene. My son uh, has some medical training. He did go into the church to uh, try to help, do what he could, you know, to help the wounded, you know, anybody he could help. And I know I saw him in one interview where he, he said, I, I can't even verbalize what I saw. That's how bad and grisly it was and the victims very young to very old no oh, yeah yeah uh, we you know we had children that were killed we had elder that were killed uh, one uh, person that was a very good friend of my daughter's actually uh, her entire family uh, was killed in this incident so eight, eight people in one family to, yes exactly yeah and you know to walk in and see that and yep. to know after the effect that he saw that you know find out later that these people are people he knew, you know, people that him and, uh, and, and my daughter knew, grew up with. It's, it's really hard to deal with. It really is. Let's go bring in the Attorney General of Texas, Ken Paxson. Ken, uh, again, Texas has been through a lot with natural disasters, of course, the hurricane, the flooding, and now this. Uh, how is the community there coping, and, you know, what potential policy changes or uh, anything can you do on a governmental level, given the mental health of this individual and what we now know that the Air Force did not do after he was subjected to court-martial, his name was not entered into a, a background check registry as it should have been. Uh, what are the authorities in Texas saying tonight? Well, first of all, Texans are very resilient. They're just an amazing group of people. You saw how they handled the hurricane and the, the flooding that occurred over a week-long period of, uh, of time and how well I th think Texans both organized and also just came to, to the rescue both in the original aftermath and then just through the weeks. This is going to be no different. We'll stand behind these people. You'll see lots of support from the state. You'll see lots of support from charities, from individuals, and I think that ultimately, you know, we'll be here for, for those people for a long time. As far as what we can do, I mean, we have laws in the book right now that basically stop people in a, in a technical sense from carrying in a church now. I think for small churches, you're going to have to, we're going to have to change the law to make it more clear that you can carry in a, in a, in a church so that this gives uh, first responders time to, to show up, especially in a rural community where it might take, you know, 
10, 15, 20 minutes to get to a site. So I think we're going to have to rethink this and have churches and businesses and schools think about how they're going to deal with this in the future. So, so uh, can you cannot, it's against the law in Texas to bring a gun into a church? Is that what you're saying? So the, so the way it works now is that you cannot bring a concealed weapon into a church. However, the church has to provide you notice. So if you're just reading the oh. statute, you would see yourself as maybe not being able to do it. Uh, but the truth is you can do it unless you're given notice. I think we need to make that more clear because it's likely that people don't carry because of the way they read the statute. And Michael, from what you've uh, been able to discern, was anyone in that church, anyone who survived, was anyone carrying? I mean, I'm, I would be surprised in Texas if, the, if there wasn't an individual in that church who had carried a, a firearm into the church, the law or no law, whatever, you know, that's a kind of an odd law, but uh, I mean, they were hit from behind. So they had no chance to react, even if they had a gun. Maybe they had, com com you know, tactical weapons training, but I mean, it's pretty hard to react when you're being shot at from behind. Well, you know, one of the points here, uh, there was a uh, individual that my son knew personally. Uh, normally he carries, but small town like this, you know, people show up to church, they disarm, leave their guns in the car, because you don't expect something like this to happen. And this particular day, his uh, wife stayed home. She wasn't feeling good, so he left his firearm with her, you know, saying, you know, I'm going to go ahead and go to church today. Well, he survived. Fortunately, he was grazed by one of the bullets, but he survived. And as he put it, what if this was the day that he didn't leave that firearm at home? What if he did take it with him? What if he did conceal mm -hmm. while he was in that church? You know, I mean, yes, you have a psycho shooting from the outside in. But think about that. If you have one person on the inside that is armed to return fire, it may not have stopped people from dying, but it would have stopped that many people from dying. It would have been a distraction. It would have got the guy's attention that, hey, somebody's shooting at me, what do I do now? Well, Mike, what the, 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 the left, the American left is saying, many in the left are saying, is that Republicans have blood on their hands because they're bought and paid for by the NRA. That's what they're saying tonight. Really? Well, that's amazing because the NRA has lots of great programs for children. They teach, you know, firearm training. The NRA, Republicans, no one's responsible for this. And the left keeps putting blame. Let me put it this way. Today, a very good friend of mine engaged, uh, today, excuse me, yesterday, a very good friend of mine engaged the shooter with his AR-15. He ran from his home to the shooting site less than a block from the house here. He engaged the shooter with his AR-15 and he shot the guy. He, we know for a fact he shot him at least two to three times. It, got the, it stopped the guy, it stopped him. From that point, the shooter then ran, got in his vehicle, my friend shot him again. They pursued and later down the road after a chase, yeah. the guy crashed and that was the end of it. But we think, think about it this way. Yes, we lost 20, uh, right now the count is 26 people that we lost yesterday in this tragedy. But there was many more people in that church that if he had not engaged that shooter with his yeah, firearm, if, 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 the liberals ha if the liberals have their way and we're not able to protect our, ourselves and he was not able to do what he did, think about how many more people would have died. And my son, who lived across the street. Think about what would have happened there. What if that guy had pursued him, his wife, and my grandson? The tragedy could have been it. twice as bad. Uh, Mike it. and Ken, uh, thank you so much for joining uh, us, both of you.